Hello and welcome to another very special episode of the Sales Operations Demystified podcast. Today we're joined by someone who has a total of eight years operations experience, approximately six of those in sales operations. Sergio, welcome. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. <laughs> so Sergio um, is currently working at Western Union Business Solutions. Um, so international payments for businesses. Correct. Um, and so we're going to be going through the standard eight questions and we're going to uncover some insights from those six years. Great. So question number one, Sergio, how did you get into sales operations? As you said, I've been in uh, operation for about eight um, eight years and I really fell in love uh, with sales operations side of things, uh, um, looking at uh, the technology, the technology part of it. Uh, working with, uh, with Salesforce and Salesforce implementation and uh, um, really all the application, looking at the, all the application that the, you can uh, plug within the tool and uh, uh, allow people really to do, uh, to be more efficient, to do the job better and uh, to be quicker selling and more efficient uh, um, selling. Uh, the first role that I had as a proper sales operation manager, it was uh, in Kaplan, it was a B2C, um, uh, B2C business uh, and so, you know, a lot of data, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, um, a lot of volume, international uh, um, uh, operation and it was a really a great gateway into the sales operation world because uh, um, not only you would have uh, the technology part, but also the um, uh, resource management uh, and uh, uh, the strategic side of things, which yeah. is you know great to uh, to explore. So you were in the role before that you were in operations, and you were exposed to a Salesforce mm -hmm. implementation. Pretty much, yes. And then you were like, I yeah. love Salesforce so much. <laughs> I'm going to transition into that. Well, it's not about loving Salesforce, and uh, uh, you know, sometimes we get too hooked up on on the tools. You know, it's it's about what Salesforce and any CRM really represents. It's the engine of what uh, of, of of your organization in going out there and finding prospects and uh, selling uh, uh, your product and your customers, which is uh, what ultimately uh, any company wants to, wants to do. Got it. And so you, you joined Kaplan as a sales, you like in a pure sales operations yes, role? Yes, And then now you much. just stayed the course. Yeah, stuck with it. <laughs> and so six eight years later, we're at Western Union. And how long have you been at Western Union? Uh, just uh, over a year. Got it. And just so we understand the, the structure of the team, so we were talking before, there's actually multiple different yeah, parts. Yeah, it's, it's a complex uh, uh, setup, the setup that we, that we have at Western Union. Uh, very interesting as uh, you know sales operation is not just a CRM it's not just Salesforce it's, it's something uh, more than that so we have uh, you know sales enablement team uh, with a group a very talented group of people uh, actually looking at uh, the training and the way people are uh, actually uh, exposing our value proposition uh, to the customers uh, we have a performance team we have a governance uh, team which which I mean and a pricing a pricing team all of that constitute sales operation got it. and approximately how many people in that in all the oh god um, that would be of the 25 I think wow all, all of it yeah. yeah yeah and then hundreds of salespeople worldwide yes Right. Okay. Do you know what? I've been trying to work out like the, the ideal ratio between ops and reps. And it, for me, it's, it's what I'm getting from these interviews is the optimum is around 1 to 25. So if you had that, that would mean we need to do 25 times 25 to get the total number of reps, which would probably be 4,000. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> I never looked at it that way, uh, uh, to be honest. Uh, to me, it's, it's really about the outcome and uh, uh, the, the, the sales operation team uh, uh, generates, you know, this day and age with the, the technology that we that we have, um, you know, one person can do much more than uh, yeah. what a sales operation professional would do, would have done ten years ago. So, uh, you know, really, I never looked at it that way. But it's interesting, uh, you know, it's a, it's a very interesting uh, way of saying it. Yeah, I was. I think the most I got to was one to one to fifty. Right. Think. Right. So that person must have some good, good tools. On that point, um, the current tech stack you guys are using, I can assume it's probably quite complex. 
It is. It is uh, indeed. For us, uh, Salesforce uh, is uh, uh, very, very important. Uh, you know, the CRM is, is important. Uh, we work and uh, we operate in a regulated environment, uh, so data that we store, uh, we need to make sure that, you know, it's safe, uh, it's in the right place, it's correct, and, uh, and all that. And it, there is a lot of moving parts in making sure that that is always true. Um, in terms of uh, what we can call the go-to-market, uh, the go-to-market tool, we always uh, uh, Altify, we use uh, DMB, we use uh, uh, Sales Navigator, Eloqua, you know, these are probably the main tools that we use from sales and marketing point, mm -hmm. uh, point of view. Cool, and are there any other tools connected in Salesforce for those? Oh, we got loads. <laughs> loads. Okay, loads. so we'll probably be here for like half an hour. <laughs> probably, this probably. Okay. Which is your like favorite? Oh God. <laughs> uh, I, I, sorry, I, 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 I asked that question as a bit of a joke because we were chatting before, right? Mm. About how all of the questions in this podcast are quite focused on tech tools, but you were saying, and if you want to repeat that, about how not the, the tools are not necessarily that important. Yeah, no, the two are not important at all. I think, as such, it's it's about the uh, what the enablement of uh, what, what what kind of value add they add to you know to the to the sales uh, to sales people. In, in general, I I love tools that take away work from uh, sales uh, from sales people as such and uh, give uh, back information. Okay. okay? Um, the stereotype, uh, I don't really buy in into the stereotype that sales people don't want to use Salesforce, so they don't want it, but I, I, I think that's just not true in, in most of the, mm -hmm. uh, of, of the cases. Uh, it's true sometimes, but not all the, um, uh, all the times. But in terms of what I like to see in a tool that I am evaluating for, for some reason, uh, I like to see that it's uh, complete in uh, what they would like uh, to achieve, whether it's a CTI integration uh, tool, or whether it's a marketing tool, or whether it's a, a prospecting tool. So there is a kind of end-to-end -end capabilities. What I don't like is a service that stops at some point, and then I need to complete what is there I want to do. I need to, I, I, I need to buy another plugin, or I need to, <laughs> that that's just doesn't, um, that doesn't, work. Doesn't, doesn't work for me. Um, I can only imagine the data quality challenge if you have. <laughs> with, yes, with your Salesforce org and these disparate teams and disparate salespeople, what are you currently doing to? Well, a, a who's responsible for that? Is that your team or is that one of the other teams? And what are you doing? Right, it's uh, it, we don't have a centralized function responsible for the data as such. Uh, you know, data is a big thing uh, in uh, not only in Western Union, any company I work with I was reading the other day that actually data. Uh, it's worth more than oil uh, uh -huh. in uh, uh, in uh, during these days, and uh, you know that gives you the sense of what you actually uh, been dealing with uh, uh, such a sensitive uh, sort of topic. So yes, we 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 do uh, do a lot of the data checks, and we put in place uh, governance around uh, uh, the way data should be inputted into the into the tool. Um, then we have different part of the business uh, looking uh, at that data, making sure that, that there is correct. The way I can say is that ultimately, from uh, you know sales operations or sales and go-to market perspective, when you look at the data that there is into uh, into the CRM, uh, the salespeople are ultimately responsible for that. Um, I can come in and clean up. I can, uh, you know, come in and say, "Oh, you're doing things wrongly," or uh, you know, beat you up, right? <laughs> but it's uh, it's not my responsibility as such. I mean, the ultimate accountability is with the people that are actually putting the data, right. uh, the data in. That's the way I think. The any, uh, I always see it anyway. Yeah. Uh, the accountability is resides where the people actually. And improving the data, but how do you get them to want to put in good data? Because it's hard. And the next question is about getting buy-in from the sales. Oh, right. So that, that's uh, again, uh, you know, one of the things that is probably more than a myth than anything. But to be honest, in my career, yes, I had uh, the old sales people saying 
salesperson saying, uh, you know, oh, I spent well, too much on the CRM, uh, you know, there's too many fields, uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, I think the sentiment around this is shifting massively. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, sales organization, uh, sales function are recognizing the importance and of uh, you know inputting data, and they don't recognize it just because or because you know we tell people it's because it's in fashion to say you know to work around data, but because uh, function such as sales operation has given back to them um, insights, mm -hmm. something that they could use, something that they could do something with, you know, um, so. Yes, when you roll out a new procedure or a new field or whatever it is that requires uh, anybody really to put uh, to spend one more second on, on the CRM, you're gonna have people mourning. Uh, you're gonna have, but um, I think this is changing. I think uh, uh, it's getting easier to get that buy-in uh, you were you were talking about, and uh, you know more and more I'm seeing the people that are actually good with the CRM. The CRM etiquette, the CRM cadence, are good at selling. Interesting. So, because would you say that historically that isn't the case? I'm not. I'm not sure whether that isn't the case, uh, but I couldn't see that. Yeah. I couldn't have uh, you know the benchmark and uh, you know there weren't enough data to, uh -huh. to, to to give me that truth. You know. Now I can see the. Uh, the structured thinking, especially in a B2B environment, in a fintech environment, or in a technology environment, you know, where sales salespeople are um, are less, uh, you know, our core sell, but more consultant, more project manager. As uh, you know, companies are making that shift in that sales organization. You know, you can see the more structured thinking in the selling process is needed in to better data, better cadence, uh, and uh, you know, is helping everybody at the end of the day. It's a win-win situation. Yeah, that's that's the first time that's come up actually. In the, you're basically saying that the more structured approach to selling is required now, and that person is normally better at maintaining the sales process and CRM. Yeah. yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Um, you said earlier about liking tools yeah. that give salespeople time and then present them data. What are you guys currently doing at the moment to make your reps more productive? Uh, well, we're always on the lookout, uh, uh, you know, for not only for new tool, uh, you know, just, we're not going to a bank spree <laughs> or something, um, but I think one of uh, uh, the things that I do is uh, making sure that we get the best out of the tool that we have, you know, it's, uh, you know, the famous face tool never comes. Uh, it's, uh, I, I think it's our role as sales operation professional to make sure that the phase two actually does arrive and uh, we take care of it and we make sure that we actually deliver on, uh, on it. When you do an implementation on, uh, uh, you know, your new data integrator or things like that, you always focus on getting it over the line and rolling it out. Um, and uh, it's very hard to keep the momentum going. I think our focus at the moment is to make sure that we really get the return of investment uh, in the existing uh, uh, tools that we have uh, invested in. Got it. Um, quick question that wasn't actually international with standard questions. Are your team responsible for building the sales forecast? Uh, the sales performance uh, uh, team is uh, yes, yes, and that sits within because you're in the governance. Yeah, yeah, it, it sits within sales operation, but it's outside my strictly cool. talking my team. Yeah. Okay, and then quickly on that, do the do the people in sales ops then work directly with the reps to understand what their own individual forecasts are, and then um, roll that up? well, we we work on a global scale, uh, trying to put together uh, you know data from uh, different geography time zones. Whole cadence you can imagine, but yes, we um, the short answer is yes, we do. Um, uh, we kind of try to have a bottom up approach as much as possible, uh, so keep you here on the ground and uh, you know, rolling those numbers up to you know, then the highest level possible, the global level. Cool. Um, 
Can we quickly talk about KPIs? Yeah. Which, are you, uh, I'm going to change the question slightly. What do you think is the most important KPI to judge a sales rep by? I'm going to be controversial here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say the more they lose, the better. Interesting. Yes. Tell me more. Um, I was telling you about uh, how um, you know sales people are recognizing that we're giving them insights. Okay. To me, yes, it's important that people, the sales people, sell. Okay, it's really, really important. Okay, but it doesn't really give me too many learnings. I want to learn from the lost deals. There is a tendency in a lot of company to hide under the carpet all those deals that we have lost. Okay, and it's any company, it's only human behavior. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, this is about you know getting sales operation out of its own comfort 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 zone. As I was saying, not only technology, you know, we sometimes we need to be behavioral scientists, okay? And uh, change, make that shift in culture to say, why don't we talk about lost deal and we actually why did we lose so many deals mm -hmm. without pointing fingers of anything, but are we going after the wrong segment, do we have the wrong product, um, are we focusing on the wrong things, right? And I think uh, sales operation need to be the driver of those things. Yes, everybody wants to do loss reviews. I heard that so many times. Um, but actually doing it, and I'm going to be honest, you know, it's not something that you can get a great deal of time uh, of people because yeah. <laughs> It's not interesting. Let's uh, uh, let's be honest. You know, sales people would rather spend their time selling, okay, and that's only fair. Uh, but how do we make sure that we are spending every single pound, dollar, or euro into the right place? I think this is one of the way. Nice. So you're essentially saying the more a rep loses, the more that you're as an organization able to learn, which in the long yeah. term is going to bring yeah. more wins. Yeah. It's like machine learning, you know, the, 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 yeah, exactly. it's, it's the same concept. Yeah, like yeah. a feedback. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. And then there's a question that we don't actually have again in the list that I want to ask about the more strategic side. Who is setting the sales strategy? And then what is the sales operations are role in executing that strategy once it's been set? Yeah, I think um, this is something that sales operation, again, it, it wasn't within this function with, when, when I started in, uh, in sales operation back on customers operation uh, back almost 10 years, uh, um, uh, 10 years ago. And this is something that sales operation is starting to own more and more uh, as, uh, you know, the function is actually, uh, is actually growing and, uh, you know, this podcast is testimony of, of, of that. Uh, there's more interest uh, in this function than it used to be probably 10 years ago. But, um, you know, on the strategy, uh, on the strategy side, I think uh, sales operation is the role sometimes to divert the traffic, okay? More like a traffic warden ah, sort, yeah. sort, of, sort of approach, okay? And making sure that everybody goes to the right place at the right time, uh, and uh, everybody then is uh, made accountable for what uh, what they said. Again, you know, not in a pointing finger sort of fashion, um, but you know, let's go back to what we said we were going to do from a strategic point of view, not only from a financial and revenue um, uh, point of view, and see how we're tracking again against those uh, uh, those goals that we set ourselves. Right? Um, how do we do all of that? First of all, there is a mindset that and and a framework that you need to lay down uh, when you do your planning, whether it's in you know, mid-year or end of the year, whatever the, the fiscal year starts in the, in the company. So there is a lot of thinking and actually you know, stepping back and uh, looking at the big picture, uh, trying then to put all the people together, you know, marketing, product, uh, uh, sales, and have those conversation, and then you know, it loops back to the to the lost deal. You know, what have we learned from uh, uh, our past uh, twelve months? Okay, and how do we take into the next twelve, the next three years, the next five, ten, fifteen? Nice. Um, and final question is about who has influenced or inspired you the most in the world of sales operations? Oh, okay. Um, 
I don't have one person to be honest with you. If if I have to think back, I been blessed uh, because I work with amazing uh, business leaders. I don't want to even call them sales operation leaders because that would be probably reductive. Mm -hmm. You know, they all around business uh, um, uh, business leaders, and I have uh, learned so much from them. This uh, un unbelievable. Uh, really, probably the person who got me off into uh, you know start using Excel, you know, Andrew. <laughs> uh, if I have to name one, who, when I was back at um, a CPO, tell me I will teach you one Excel formula every day, you know, and that's what we were doing. Uh, you know, I was the finance director um, back uh, um, back then, and that was sparked the uh, the interest. I think more than anything, I. I need to thank all the people that taught me what not to do. You know, uh, you know all the mistakes uh, that I've seen making yeah. and that I've made. Uh, you know, um, these are the people that taught me. You know what, what not to do in certain situation uh, because probably they made that mistake yeah. for me sometimes. Nice. Okay, so normally some of the things that I liked. Okay. And what I saw twice from you, Andrew, which is quite interesting, is learning not from what went well, but what actually didn't go well, like the lost reviews, and then what people did badly. So that's quite interesting. Um, I liked the point you made about oh wait, am I might come back now? About no, so any tool that can if they give time back to rats, but also give them information yeah. or data. Um, and then the, the overall point about tools not necessarily being that important is more about what impact they can have on your sales process. Absolutely, yes. Um, I think uh, as sales operation, we're getting too much hooked up on the big names and on uh, the flashy marketing, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, which is fine. We, we only human. Uh, and that, gives me, that tells me two things. First, that this space is growing massively. There's more investments coming and there's so many exciting things. Uh, they're happening in, in this space, but uh, as a sales operation professional, we need to stay laser focused on execution because ultimately, you know, if you have to summarize in uh, one world, one sentence, that's what we're there for enabling execution. Enabling execution, and on that note, <laughs> um, that was an immensely valuable session. Um, clearly, have, you clearly think a lot about sales operations. I'm sure that was super valuable for the audience. So. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's a great pleasure. Thank you.